Welcome back to Singapore Stories. In episode two, I met with each designer to work through their capsule collections for the final leg of this design competition. We looked at feedback from the judges and each designer thought about how they wanted to evolve their look. Now in episode three, we go behind the scenes and take a deeper dive into each designer's creative processes. Let's see what they've been up to. Okay, so for my collection, I have out of the six garments, three are completed. The third one is still being uh, tweaked. It's still in, in panels, but yeah. And the other three to go. So it's, yeah, that's, it's coming along. Really now, it's, it's also about styling the garments. It's also about generally how you want to sort of even um, showcase it, really. And, and yeah, so you have your design concepts, the three garments ready, three more to go. But really now the next three has to sort of really sort of gel the entire collection. So there's a lot of thinking, uh, a lot of hands-on, um, loads of work. The best takeaway from the mentorship sessions was really to get a perspective, someone else's perspective into your design and your aesthetics. What I'm most looking forward to in the next round, um, I think it's really nice to sort of work with everyone. I, I, I'm looking forward to the judging, um, I like to, I mean, it's kind of nice to sort of have the camaraderie of other designers in the industry. Um, you know, I, I'm really looking forward to that interaction because I think I've worked alone for a very, very long time. And I'm quite excited about the finale. It's quite tough sometimes to iron out brocade with a steam iron, but this seems to work. I normally use a flat press iron. So this is pretty good. It does work. I feel that my progress in the competition so far has been great actually personally. Um, I think I've grown a lot in my career as a designer, even through this competition. Just finding out who exactly I want to design for, elevating my, um, my techniques, especially with the help of my mentors. I think I haven't done anything up to this scale yet, uh, especially with what I'm trying to achieve for my Singapore Stories collection. Um, I'm trying a lot more different fabric manipulations and even some couture techniques that I've never tried before in my entire life. So um, it's a big jump, but it has been exciting and um, a lot of hard work, but very fulfilling. So I'm actually very excited to see everything come to fruition. Okay, so here are all the swatches, swatches and I'm very excited to be using all these laces here. There are many varieties and I'm really particularly attracted to the flowers of course because of my collection. Um, I'm also very attracted to all these, these glittery and sparkles and I'll be including them into my collection as well to add a bit more depth. I found this lace fabric on Swatch On and I've individually cut out the flower pieces to use it as applique on my designs. I've actually totally moved away from printing um, so that I can make my designs more 3D and more interesting to give it more body instead of just flat and 3D. And I've actually played around with a lot of the organza also from Swatch On to create all these flowers that will go onto my dresses in my collection. I've got a long ways to go with my collection. I would say got 70% more work ahead of me in the coming month. I think I've really explored what it meant to be a ready wear designer. Thus, thus far, I've really just focused on functionality and now I'm really taking a moment to ask certain questions, make uh, certain design decisions that might not be motivated or driven by a adaptive function. For example, I am looking at water and how it offers a form of freedom, particularly for Ping Siu, whom I'm co-designing with. Uh, and we're looking at specific fabrics, um, shapes and silhouettes that are reminiscent of waves. So I'm not just creating uh, practical straight lines, but really seeing how consistently all my seams are parallel to the way I cut the fabric, the direction of the grain, moving away from just woven fabrics and knits, um, creating more and more textures that 
re-emphasize this theme of water and resilience. So this dress over here, instead of relying on buckles like we did before, you're able to wear it first over your head before reaching for the other strap and bring it over your head as well. So we've really just developed the functionality. We have hidden a magnet over here to align that seam, reinforced it with boning over here and over here so that we keep the lines clean and crisp. With fluidity being such an important theme for the collection, uh, we've really only been using Swatch On as a fabric resource for the past two years and found this amazing uh, chiffon that's been pleated, uh, reminiscent of waves. We've opted for these two colours and I'm so excited to do that sample over here in this amazing grey blue. Yeah. My best takeaway from the uh, mentorship sessions thus far has really been developing our visual language, making very clear decisions and consistency in the design decisions that I make throughout the pieces. How far along am I in my collection? Actually, to be honest, it's just been um, illustrations and conceptualizing. The actual making, not so much. There is still a lot for me to do. Like, basically, I'm only 5% done with my looks. Uh, I'm trying to not think about how much I need to do. Lah. Like, take it step by step, lah. look by look. Lah. From the time when we had the semi-finals, right, it was... My headspace was like all over. Like, I couldn't zoom in to like, what I wanted to focus on. So, uh, Leonard and the lecturers at LaSalle, they gave me a lot of like, feedback and they told me to stay true to myself, which I think uh, that really inspired me to continue working towards the direction that I was initially uh, visualizing. Uh. The accessories that I'm planning to use for the collection will be more of like statement pieces. It's gonna be like uh, long dangling earrings and then like some necklaces maybe, but definitely like heels, high, super high heels. So we have the songket and then we have the sari here. So this sari is a bit see-through, which I think like brings out the whole like ethnicity look and the embroidery is like really nice. So this is like the completed look. And then I mean to help myself visualize, I put the photo of the fabric beside the illustration. And this is the remainder of what I need to do. So now you've seen the designers hard at work, you've seen the stresses and the struggles. Who will buckle under the pressure? And who will rise to the challenge, taking one step closer to becoming Singapore's next big designer? Stay tuned to episode 4, where the real judgement awaits. Mm -hmm.